Welcome to Ear Biscuits, the podcast where two lifelong friends talk about life for a long time. I'm Link. And I'm Red. This week at the round table of dim lighting, we're going to be sharing our recent family adventures that happened to each of us over the Thanksgiving break. Uh huh. I went to Disneyland. I didn't. So I got some, I got some fresh observations because it, it's been a while since I've been there, my friend. Well, you've been to Disneyland at least three times more than I have. That's my si- daughter's si- doing. Since the last time I went to She's Disneyland. She's a Disney freak. I haven't been to Disneyland in four years, five years probably. How's your back? I could Horrible. tell when you walked in that there was something going on. Well, one of the things that we'll talk about is we actually spent Thanksgiving Day together. Did you notice that my back was pretty messed up on Thanksgiving Day? I just, I didn't know. it. So. It was messed up the whole week. You just seemed so grateful, and that's was, all I noticed. And it was starting to get better by Thursday. And then it yesterday, we're recording this on a Monday, yesterday, Sunday after Thanksgiving, I'm like, I'm back. What? I'm back, and I'm like, my back is back. <laughs> okay. No more pain. Do you know what triggered it? I think I do. And then last night, I'll tell you what I think it triggered it. It was back, the back pain was back. Yeah. But then last, so I go I go to bed, I'm like, we got a big week, we're doing some things that we can't talk about yet. Um, and I tend to, whenever there's a chance. When tra- can we talk about it, damn it? I, the fact that it frustrates you so much is I find very interesting. What, 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 because it's the main thing on my mind. Yeah, but I don't. I like keeping secrets. I don't like not talking about things that are on my mind. Okay. Uh, whenever Especially we're getting, when it's good. Whenever we're getting ready to do something new, I've noticed a pattern that my back will go out. Like, oh, we're getting ready. I'm, I'm getting ready to travel, and we're getting ready to do this new thing. So I've developed this ability okay. to associate the stress or whatever. Like, does something in the back muscles? I don't know how it works. Tension. But what that has done for me is it has let me not get too stressed out when it happens. So it's like, okay, this is temporary. This isn't like oh. gonna be around for months and months and months. Like it used to be around for a long time. And so you're stressed out, which causes it, but you're not getting stressed out about the back about problems it. because that would make it even worse. And that's what's happened in the past. Because I'm usually able to be like, okay, you do your stretches, there'll be a few days. Sometimes it might just be a few hours. You never really know. This one lasted all week. And then, like I said, yesterday, a full week later. Now, the thing I did tie it to, the physical thing I tied it to, is a really intense bench pressing session. <laughs> okay, now this might sound crazy to you. Um, how does bench press? So far, yes. How does bench intense press bench pressing affect your lower back? I, I was doing like a an especially long session, and it was like it was really intense, and then. What's wrong with you? I'm just really showing interest. But well, go ahead. But let me but but see this is the troubling thing is I never really know because I can always almost always tie it to either something that I did physically or something that's stressing me out because I'm always doing things physically that might hurt me and I'm always doing things in the in life that might stress me out. So L- lifestyle, <laughs> man. And so I'm like how did cuz Sunday night after I did this bench pressing session I'm like, oh man, I'm really, oh this, oh, this is a bad one. This is a deep one. I call it ground zero when it goes back to what I feel is like the original disc injury. Oh God. And then I'm reading a book that I got about back injuries. That's one of my pastimes. And- um, Does that make it worse? In the first like three pages, the guy talks about avoiding bench press. I'm like, what? And then he explains where, where the pressure comes from. I'm like, well, it must be the bench press, but, but it could be the fact that I'm a little stressed out. Long story short, he suggested doing push-ups instead of bench press, okay? So yesterday, I'm better. I haven't worked out the whole week because of my back. So I'm like, I'm gonna do 100 push-ups. That's a lot. Not in one, you know, I do like 20 sets of five. Okay. No, I do five sets of 20. That works. 20 sets of five would be <laughs> moronic. I do five sets of 20. No, it wouldn't. I mean, sometimes you gotta start, you gotta start with. And uh, after the, and so I, I did that and um, was fine all day yesterday. Last night, while sleeping, which is, this is so common. While sleeping at like 2 a.m., I wake up and, I, and I'm like, uh-oh. 
It wasn't like I rolled over and it started hurting. It was just like I woke up because hurting. it was hurting. Oh, and I was like, oh no, man. I was like, okay, well I'll try. And I tried to find a comfortable position to sleep. Couldn't really. Did go back to sleep. Got up. Did my like extra long stretching routine with the lacrosse ball and all that stuff that I do every day. Okay. Took some Advil. Put some Bengay on there. And uh, I'll, I'll be well, fine. Well, that, make, <laughs> that makes me giggle. I'll be fine. But I am glad. I'm glad that the thing that we're doing that's stressing me out is not happening today, but happening tomorrow. And it does not involve bench press. Yeah, and it's not like a physical thing. It's not like you have to be like have a lot of lateral motion. As long as I can walk and look. I in fact I did that this morning as I walked through the kitchen. I was like, does it look like something's wrong with me when I walk? And she was like, hmm. Only if you know what you're looking for. <laughs> so when we talk about this thing that we're gonna do that we finally get to talk about and we tell you the thing that you can look for, you'll know which one to look at to then make a decision as to whether or not you could tell if my back was hurt. But I'm gonna be fine, don't worry about me. I'm in top physical form. <laughs> <laughs> Mentally, <laughs> but physically, boy, let me just look at me, man. Good gracious. Have you noticed how I've been walking lately? <sighs> you, you'll be all right. Just don't, yeah. don't don't add the back panic. It's nice to know that you've got that in its place. Because boy, I remember the back panic when you would just like, you would be, be like, is this it? Am I coming to see you, Ethel, or whatever Fred Sanford used to say? I'm not beyond traveling down to Panama and getting some stem cells injected in my lower back. Just so you know, that is still at the top of mind. Could that be on, monetized on YouTube? Oh, 100%. It will be when we do it. Okay, great. You should get some too. It's not gonna hurt oh, you. Oh yeah, I, I mean, I'll be there. I'll get some. Yeah. I'll get some in the uh, in the shoulder. That's why I don't bench press. Yeah, actually, you know what? You, I'm gonna get some in my, my shoulder sho my and my shoulder, back. My shoulder, it pops out and then it will usually go right back in. And you can just get it intravenously as well. You can just do a full, treatment and you feel like Superman. And you know what? Lily has the same thing. Of course, to transition into my vacation Daughter's here. Back. <laughs> uh, she, this is Lily's first time back from college for our Thanksgiving break. So we were looking forward to that. The whole reason that we planned to go to Disneyland was mm -hmm. because she is obsessed with Disney. She loves Disneyland. I, she, you know, she's really into Marvel and Star Wars and now that all that's folded in, to the park experience. It was a smart move on that I part. I do wanna tell you about the specifics of that. Um, so the, and we, so we went for two days and the first, after we stayed in the hotel the first night, um, we went to downtown Disney, then bedded down for the night for our first day at the park, real fresh, real, real early, so we'd get an absolute full day. Did you stay in the park? No. We stayed like outside of the park and just like a, a hotel. I was meaning like wait until it closes call. and like get under something. No. There's an urban legend that Lincoln was telling me about that. There's like that Mark Twain Island in the middle of uh, Disneyland. He said uh, some people swam over there and stayed an urban all legend. night. That's true. And then they Tom Sawyer Island. Tom Sawyer. And then they tried to swim back and then a, a with a baby and the baby died or something. I didn't listen too closely because like that was kind of a downer early in the day. But just so you know, I'm not recommending it. You could easily stay inside there. There's so um, many places to hide. There's so many places to hide. Now, if you get caught, you're in a lot of trouble. And doing yeah. a whole I, family doing it? There's a, there's a lot at stake. A family of five You doing know what it? I'm gonna do? I'm just gonna go sleep in a bed and come back the next day, it, just buy a second ticket. Finding a comfortable spot would be difficult. But that next, the, the first morning, Lily said, I rolled over in my sleep and my shoulder came out. Oh man. And I was like, did I it go you were right back? I'm talking about in? her back because no. of their back stuff. And I was like, you know what? I've given you this. This is this is the genetic, this is the physiology of how your shoulders are built. You're like me. Sometimes I've rolled over in bed or reached for something. I thought that I had damaged it in like middle school when you started taking me to that bench press behind the bathroom at the law school that like your dad gave us access to and we would go bench press there and I would be pushing so much weight and then like I would start laughing and I had, we would like, have laugh attacks while bench pressing. Then you would weird. start laughing and the bar would be on my chest and like you 
you couldn't get it off of my chest. Because I was laughing. Because you were laughing so hard. Now, and then sometimes my shoulder would pop out and I thought that's what did it, but it's well, genetic. Let me, let me stop you there. I have developed a theory and you, you are confirming it right now. And I've confirmed it multiple times. Hey, I'll confirm a theory if it's right. 98% percent of the time, people misassociate whatever they're dealing with with the, with the cause. Okay, so I can't tell you how many times people say, I got food poisoning and then they- Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And they're like, I, I had- I agree with that. I was at the uh, Applebee's last night and I got those riblets and I've got food poisoning. Right. 98% of the time they're wrong. And because food so poisoning sad. almost always is associated with your last meal, your most recent meal, when it almost is never related to your most recent meal. It's kinda like me and farts. And I and I've thought, I've, I've I'm, thought always, I'm always saying that I've farted and you're like, that's not what you just ate, it's what you ate yesterday. Yeah, but, you, but you've literally gotten done with lunch, thrown it away, come back in and farted and been like, oh, those beans I had for lunch. I'm like, dude, those beans you have for lunch are like sitting in your stomach. <laughs> Nothing has happened in your colon yet. Pushing gas through everything else. No, so. that's not how it works. But anyway. But food poisoning is sad because then you're never eating those riblets again and it's not the riblets fault. Yeah. But the shoulders popping out. Was not the bench press, it's just genetic. Look at. You're right. And that is what I'm saying. Yeah, 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 I'm saying, but you forever associated it with the bench press, just like I forever associated I my it, back problems with bad deadlifting I in high wrong. school. Yeah, I thought that I had stretched out my, my shoulder stuff, and then for the rest of my life it was popping out. <laughs> for those just listening, who knows what I'm doing right now. Oh gosh, <laughs> this is why you need to watch. This is why you shouldn't watch the video version. <laughs> <laughs> he's gi he's giving you multiple reasons to not watch the video version this week. So, uh, like father, like daughter, her shoulders popping out too, buddy. But she's not experiencing and back issues. I'm not. No, I'm just finding she's it not, interesting. She's not related to you. No, but Link, she has a bionic spine. I'm just interested. It's oh, like, yeah, hey, not going wrong with that. It's a it's bionic. I know. I'm just, but like, she's not having any pain with that. That's great. Um, uh, sometimes a little bit. Okay, well there, thanks. <laughs> I, I didn't know that's what you were talking about. I just, yeah, I, don't, I just I didn't. Mean, you don't have a bionic spine. But I might need one. Uh, it's quite a recovery for a middle-aged man. Yeah, yeah, I don't, I'm not signing up for that. <laughs> I don't, yeah, I don't want fusion surgery unless I absolutely have to have it. Let's do some ads for ourselves. Okay. Mythical.com, if you wanna get this amazing color changing mug. When you put in hot stuff, it reveals a design. And you see it on the desk of Good Mythical Morning this entire past season. Well, it's going away. It's going away. That's At what the happens, end of the, the mugs year. go away. If you want this mug, you have to get it by the end of the year because it's going away. And it's very special. If you wanna get this world's best boss mug, uh, I'm assuming you just go to Amazon and search it because I just picked it out of the cabinet in there. I mean, it's a Tell shitty me. mug. <laughs> I mean, it's it's Tell literally me. like, I mean, look at this. Tell them to go to amazon.com slash mythical first. Well, go to amazon.com slash sure mythical, we make sure we don't sell it. If we yeah. don't, then you could probably, there's multiple places where you, nobody has rights to this. This is stupid. Mythical.com, amazon.com slash mythical. But again, for our mug, mythical.com. Get it while you can because it will be gone. Uh, well, j just to get the physical stuff out of the way. Keep uh, going. A couple of weeks ago, everyone in your family got sick one by one, right? Is that how it started? It went through your whole family. I felt sure it went, we got it from someone in your house. It was a cold and. I don't know if you got it from somebody in my house. I thought we did. Well. All I because we were asking how long how long does Shepard have it? Shepard's always got something, man. Shepard's always got something. He got you something while playing video games, I think, is what's happening. And then. <laughs> He's then, getting the bugs from the video games. Then but, Lando got it, but, then Lincoln got but it. one by one, it went through your whole family. Then I got it, then Christy got it. Okay, and so, and that was a couple weeks ago. So, leading into Thanksgiving, on the weekend before Thanksgiving, like the Monday, Locke is, is, is become sick <laughs> with a cold. Yeah. And he has a fever and we're like, oh no, man, this isn't, we, we, you know, he, we, he did the KET test, it's not COVID, it's just there's so many viruses going around right now, everybody's getting colds, right? And so 
He felt like crap for a couple of days and then went and Jesse is like sending out, Jesse's, you know, we, we've got a crowd that's pretty tense when it comes to sickness in general. Yeah. The people that we were having over for Thanksgiving. Mm -hmm. And so uh, Jesse was like, I wanna let y'all know that Locke is sick, he had a fever, but he's doing a little bit better today. And everybody was like, we, we wanna come to Thanksgiving. We, we, we don't wanna change plans. We don't wanna have like a food exchange. We're going for it. Just let us know how he feels in the morning. Then Wednesday, as Locke's getting better, Shepard starts getting sick. Mm -hmm. Shepard gets a fever, like 101 or something like that. 102 maybe at one point. Still, I don't know what the discussion was at your house, but Jesse told everybody and everybody was like, we're still coming. Shepard will just wear a mask, which he did. Yep. And we ate outside, which we were planning on eating yep. outside anyway. It's California, baby. That's why you moved to California, so you can eat outside next to the pool on Thanksgiving. <laughs> eat it. Gosh. Okay? I love it here. Meaning the food, eat the food. Keep moving to Austin. I love it here. Um, so we had that, and then Friday, Jesse starts coming down. And I'm like, oh no, no, I'm I'm the one, I'm holding out. I'm like, I don't even understand how these viruses work. I'm like, I, I bet bench pressing will keep it. Yeah, okay. I get I got exposed. Uh, surely I got exposed to this at some point. Like, what's the incubation period? Are we? Hey, hey, how is? And so I'm. First of all, I'm doing everything I can to not get sick for the thing that we're going to be <laughs> for real? doing this week. Because I, 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 I would take hurt back over a cold yeah. while doing the kind of thing that we're gonna be doing any day. So I'm like, man, I can't get sick, I can't get sick. So I'm like, not, I'm kinda staying away from everybody for the most part. I'm like taking all kinds of stuff that may or may not work. I'm staying very hydrated. I'm sleeping at least eight hours every single night. I've done, and so I feel like maybe I'm in the clear. Jesse is, she's almost all the way through it. They're all coughing like crazy. Oh gosh. They're just coughing everywhere. Meanwhile. Yeah. Uh, you know, Lando was diligent wearing his mask except when he was taking bites of food and stay, keeping his distance from Shepard except when they were playing the video games after we were done eating. Today, I heard. he is home from school. With a fever. Thanks to, thanks to your family, but, but hey, the food made it worth it. Hey, but this is the interesting thing because I thought that the virus that went through your family, which now you're making me think that it came from my family to begin with, mm -hmm. was the same virus that then got back to us, but it's a different virus because it came back and now it's on Lando again. Yeah, why, why would everyone get the same thing twice and in you, in, within weeks of each other? I and think, so now you're susceptible to the new one. I think I've been exposed and I made it out. Yeah. But you're susceptible, yeah. so you need to be I'm, on top of everything. I'm Hydration, a, sleep. I'm in a tough spot. Just stay away from your family. It's surprisingly easy, I learned. <laughs> <laughs> Where do you, you stay in the garage bench pressing, that's yeah, what you do. Yeah, just constant bench pressing. I mean, it definitely knowing what everyone was bringing to Thanksgiving to eat was a big factor in, mm -hmm. in us saying, hey, we gotta find a way to make this work. I'm not gonna, we're not gonna not have Thanksgiving. Well, but we would And have, then we would, we could have had it at our house. There wasn't gonna be an exchange of food though. Oh, really? Just like last year. Last year it was just us. But. The McLaughlin's and the, and the but, meals at our house. Yeah, but we took, we exchanged food with the McCargs. Oh. Yeah. Because well, they, they were on a strict lockdown at that time. But we, but there was a food exchange. So there was talk of a food exchange. I didn't wanna do it. And, I, and of course, I was, the, we, I was the turkey man. The, first of all, the sides were incredible, oh, and yeah. and and I kid you not, I up until actually right now, I mean, I had a smoothie for breakfast this morning, but every single day since Thursday, the only food I put into my body is stuff from Thanksgiving <laughs> for breakfast, lunch, mm -hmm. and dinner. Nothing else. I've only <laughs> eaten leftovers <laughs> Thursday. What had the so I ate leftovers Friday, Saturday, and Sunday exclusively. What you, nothing you are, you're, else? You're speaking of breakfast. Yeah, because I would. Because you I, wake up later. I, you I'm, eat a brunch. I'm I'm not eating right when I wake up. I'm eating like midday. Okay. And so I just had two meals. I just had like a midday 
turkey and dressing See, this brunch. This is the advantage. We ran out. It's the advantage of having it at your house. You you ended yeah, up having you I, had to have had more. Yeah, but that's the and that's what you get for having to, you have to clean up everything. Yeah, but, but you get more left. William items. brought the mac and cheese, and that mac and cheese was so good, and there was so much of it. I had mac and cheese last night. I mean, and I texted him about it, and I was like, "Man, you know this what? is the gift that keeps on giving. It's good for the immune system it's too." So, actually, I, it up. I thought I thought about that, and I think that I, on the whole, I think the food I was eating was better than other choices I could have been making. I mean, turkey's good for you. There were some collards in there. Those sweet potatoes. There's a lot of sugar, but there's also a sweet potato. That's got, that's good for you. <laughs> there's some collards. There's broccoli casserole, which is still broccoli my casserole. It has went, broccoli in it. Went real fast. Went, it actually, and, see, I was done with that my, on Friday. We had that for three days. I was able to stretch because I took it back. I took most of it back. But man, it was so it was so good. When you've got listen, that's Christie's special. Nothing against you know. I already said how much I love California. I love California, but if you're from California or you've been here too long, you've forgotten how to do Thanksgiving. I'm sorry, y'all, you just, you, Thanksgiving is not about being healthy. It's about the food tasting good. I'm not gonna tell the story again about the Super California Thanksgiving we went to that one time where they did deconstructed stuffing, which made me wanted to physically hurt the guy who served it to me. <laughs> we had two types of stuffing. Oh wow, and they were both great. One of them had meats in it. Well, the one- Sausages? In the stuffing. The ones that Jesse made is based or on the her, dressing, her, mom's, if you will. her mom's recipe and it's got hot and sweet, like hot and maple sausage built into it and it's big. And then the one that Jenny made uh, is, is the classic one that like my mama makes, which I actually prefer the classic one, but I ate oh, yeah. the hell out of both of them. Mm -hmm. And so anyway, I'm sorry. Again, I love California, but it ruins your ability to do Thanksgiving correctly. You need to be from the South and possibly the Midwest and to get this correct. Um, this is the worst time to be giving this feedback. It's like we need to be giving this feedback just right after Halloween. Just replay this. But let me just talk quickly about the turkey mishap that I had because uh, I didn't discern one and I ate the turkey. I embarrassed myself in front of my neighbors. Oh. At least I'm thinking I probably did. I'm a turkey guy, uh, and I don't mean that by like saying I really love turkey. I'm saying that I'm the guy who makes the turkey for Thanksgiving. Turkey's okay. Yeah. Um, I try to make it as good as it possibly can be for the holiday. I smoked one turkey, and I don't mean like I rolled it up in a joint. <laughs> um, I, I, I put it on a grill. Yeah. And, <laughs> I guess that is what some people might think at first, but I don't it's, think that's why. Hey, it's California. I feel like, <laughs> I, you know, California Thanksgiving, you're smoking turkey. It's like, what do you mean by that? Is there a pipe involved? <laughs> this means putting it on a grill, a smoker, and smoking it for an extended period yeah. of time. I did a whiskey maple glaze on this thing. I took the entire breastbone of the turkey out which is difficult. Eat that first, that's always, just And so I could way. spatchcock the turkey, put it really flat so it cooks evenly. It was great. Actually, I made a little mistake with, it cooked faster than I wanted to. I didn't get to crisp the skin as much as I wanted to, but set that aside. I also deep fried two turkey breasts, okay? Uh, Jenny, who loves white meat, uh, our friend Jenny, she, she brought these two turkey breasts and she likes a fried turkey, so I was like, yeah, I'll do it. I've oh, got wow. this like electric fryer. It makes it super easy. So I pull this thing out. I've got the turkey, the smoking turkey is smoking. It's kind of doing its thing and I'm like, okay, I'm ready to deep fry these turkeys. I've got this electric smoker that's like a big cube and I had three gallons of peanut oil that I was gonna use as my oil. You said smoker, but you meant fryer. Fryer, sorry, yeah, it's a big, it's a fryer, electric fryer. So it's not one of the ones where you put it over the open flame and potentially burn your house down. Um, hmm. Which I think I might have to upgrade to that based on the story I'm about to tell you though. So I'm like, okay, I'm gonna fill this thing up with oil and turn it on. So as I'm getting ready to turn the, to pour the oil, the three gallons of oil into the fryer, I think to myself, I remember there being like a valve at the bottom of this thing last year. It's like a valve that you can open to drain the oil when you're cleaning it. I'm like, but it's underneath this, this mechanism that's on the outside that has the element heating element. So I was like, surely I didn't not close that valve. <laughs> what an idiot. 
And so I just pour it in there and then I I see that it's the level is three gallons. I'm like, hey, see, I told you I closed that valve. I turn around to do something to like mess with the other turkey. And I turn back around and there is a pool of peanut oil oh that is God. spilling out all around the fryer, all on top of my outdoor bar area. <laughs> glug, 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 down glug. onto the concrete and going into the drain. Oh. Straight oil. Hey, good you got a drain. Straight to the ocean. Um. So I panic, I pick up the heating element which is attached to the control mechanism and I set the whole thing inside the oil. I didn't even remember doing this until later when I looked. And then I turn the valve and I screw it up. And then I So just, you were able to find the valve pretty quickly when you needed to. Yeah, but there was a lot of oil that had already left. And that was when I, <laughs> now I have neighbors, <laughs> I have neighbors all around, right? Oh. This is. <laughs> This is the. Do you have security cam footage of this scramble? I don't have. No, no, I don't. I don't have a. I don't have an angle on that part. I have an angle on the entrance. I didn't think you'd have had an angle on where you you cook. So you you kind of know where cooking. my neighbors are. Like we share. Like the the, the, the yards are all kind of together, but, but we're they would of, have to all look down. They would look down on you. Oh, it's not about them seeing me. It's about them hearing me say. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, just once? No, you... I said it a couple of times. Oh. <laughs> I oh, said yeah. it one time there, and then I went inside, <laughs> told Jesse, I was like, I made a big mistake, <laughs> <sighs> and give me some paper towels, and I was like, do you, do yeah, you, do you have- up oil is tough. I said, do you have towels, bath towels that we don't need? Mm, yeah. And she was like, yeah, these two. Two. She had two that had like yellow stains on them. <laughs> so it's, it's just from the uh, from the, the in the wood from the sauna. So so I'm like, okay, I go outside and I like start cleaning it up. And then I look and I realize that that's when I realize that the whole heating element with the control mechanism, okay, is in the oil. Even the even the electronic, like the dial, <laughs> the electronic part of it. <laughs> I pick it up. Oh, you do you having a. <laughs> Louder this time. I'm sorry. <laughs> and I was so mad. I like I get so mad at myself when I make mistakes. It's like it's not healthy. I'm in therapy. Is there any other word? I mean, that's you were you you that you were at you were over the edge. Yeah. And and that was because I held it up and saw the oil pouring out of the inside of the housing. This is this is a fire hazard at this point. And so then I'm like, I can't fry these turkeys. Mm-mm. Because no. what are you gonna do, plug in this fryer that's got oil inside the electronics? No. Well, that's what I did and it worked fine. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, I let it drain for a really long time and then I was like, you have to get oil very, very hot. Like think about the way a heating element works. It's inside this thing and it's designed to heat the oil up to like 400 degrees. Yeah. The inside of the heat, the, the worst thing that could happen is the electric, current, which is what's happening in the heating element to hook it up, it's just gonna, it's not gonna catch it on fire, it's just gonna make it hot inside the thing and it'll probably smoke and maybe melt some of the plastic, but I'll be able to tell. At least that was my theory. And I completely drained it, completely wiped it down, turned it on and watched it for 10 minutes before I proceeded and it was fine. Did you have the fire extinguisher ready? I brought the fire extinguisher out. And Did so, you read it and say, is this an electrical fire one or a grease I, fire one or, oh, both. <laughs> I, I, I looked at it and I couldn't come to conclusions yeah, about it's, that. It's just, you know. I just know I wasn't supposed to put water on it, but can you? The thing I feel about fire extinguishers is this, if you got one, that's, that is a victory and just use it and see what happens. And you could say that you did your best. I don't, I, we need to look that up. Because yeah, we is, should. It, is it bad to put a fire extinguisher of any kind on a grease fire? Or I know you can't put water on it, but. Uh, Hashtag your biscuits, Just let us uh, know. But I will say that a couple of the families that live around us, I believe are grandparents, because during the holidays you'll hear children and during other times you don't hear the children. Mm. It's either they're a normal family that only lets kids outside during holidays, <laughs> which is possible, <laughs> or it's grandparents <laughs> who are only having kids over. So they learned a word. And so I think that, yeah, they were like, they're, that man down there is having something, something's wrong with him. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but, I, hey, but it turns out Is there out a good. grease stain on your, uh, oh, on, your oh. on your concrete? Is I, that, that's, that's tough. No, you know what I did? I've had some oil mishaps 
on this surface already. Okay. So what I did is I took one of those bath towels and I polished the entire surface with the peanut oil. Oh. And it just evened it out. Like it never happened. I bet it smells good out there. It does, it smells great. Just, <laughs> just, don't, just don't smoke a cigarette out there. <laughs> uh, you wanna talk about Disneyland? Yeah. Um, yeah, so the first day we went to, uh, I always wanna call it Islands of Adventure. But, but that's the um, that's the universal thing, and it, because that's what's in my head, I can't call it the right thing. Where when Mythical so was smaller, we all went to where's the car? Uh, where's the car? What's the car's place? What's it called? Adventure, California Adventure, California Adventure. Yeah, that's what it's called. Yeah, uh, we went there on the first day, and then we went to Disneyland proper on on the second day. I had not been to. Uh, Islands of Adventure <laughs> since uh, <laughs> California Adventure. I, I haven't been to the adventure yeah. uh, since they um, made uh, Avengers Campus a thing. There's a Where whole, is that? Uh, you go in and you hang a left. Is it, was it, it something else? It was something else that wasn't memorable. And it, and it had. It didn't replace Indiana it, Jones, right? Indiana no, Jones no, no. is at Disneyland. That's in Disneyland. So Tower of Terror is has been revamped as a Guardians of the Galaxy ride. Oh, the ants, the ant world. Ant world, that's the that's ant, gone. ants ride is gone. And that, that was a bit, that was a big area that had like a, a you, you could walk through like their kids stuff. Yeah, and, and you seemed like you, you it was I like never a honey I shrunk the, yeah, yeah, yeah. the kids no, kind of a It was time for that to go. Right, see we never went there. They changed that into Avengers Campus and then the, the pier part with like the roller coaster yeah. and the big Ferris wheel and like the, the water. And the corn dog castles over there. And the there. corn dog castle that you love. They're not getting corn, rid of that. Corn dog castle is still there. They're never getting rid of that. That's um, the pinnacle of the park. I almost got one, but I didn't. They changed that. To be, that's Pixar Pier, and then there's like um, those rides. So are, Cars Land kind of got extended out into the Cars Land is well, still Cars Land is Cars thing. Land, but Pixar. Is, but I was I was most. I mean, we went to California Adventure, and they made that uh, roller coaster into. An incredible themed roller coaster, but it's the same roller coaster. And Christy was very proud of herself because she went on that, but she didn't tell us how petrified she was that she was overcoming something. The wooden roller coaster, yeah. Not a huge fan of it, but it but it was fine. Um, but uh, the Avengers Campus, there's this brand new Spider Man ride that, like, I don't know if you if you if you know on Pixar Pier, there's a um, like a a VR ride where you're playing all these carnival games with 3D glasses on and it's like Pixar Toy Story themed stuff and that's really awesome. That's the been there a you're, while. You're yeah. sh shooting? Where you're shooting rings and stuff. Oh, and that's am keeping amazing, a score. yeah. That's amazing. Um, well, they did a Spider-Man ride that is basically the same approach but instead of like using a cannon that you're actually pulling on something physical and then these imaginary 3D rings are coming out. You just throw out your hand as if you're uh, casting a web, like your Spider-Man. Phew, 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 phew. You don't have to make the noises, but I did. Um, and it Is just- it Does you feel like it's accurate? It's pretty accurate. And you, you're, you're throwing them, and so you're on this track and you're zinging around and there's all these, there's this set design, but then all these screens and it's, it's 3D glasses and all that. We wait, waited for like an hour and a half to get on that ride. I well, because so they've- It's not worth more than an hour. They've done away with the fast pass. That's gone. Which, I, do, you, do you, having been there now, if you're you, a, why, why, Okay, what, why did they get rid of the fast pass? It was just becoming clogged. I didn't. I didn't research why. Was but it like a traffic they, they issue with everybody going to the fast pass? Who knows line? all of their reasons? But if you if you have an annual pass, you can then get something which will give you an a, um, a comparable experience to fast pass. I think. But because I couldn't get that, and we don't have annual passes, we just waited in line. But that's that was way too long for Spider Man, especially when I halfway through the ride, I was so exhausted. And I was pretty- Shoulder popped out. I thought my shoulder was gonna pop out. Right. Both of them. Like, I'd come out of the thing just limp-armed. Yeah. Just the rest of the day, knuckle-dragging. <laughs> you gotta be careful when you when you got that neophysiology. Right, mm -hmm. can't be Spider-Man. But the, the Tower of Terror turned into the Guardians of the Galaxy ride was amazing. I would've waited 90 minutes for that. Still works in the same fashion? Yeah, it's the same mechanically, it's just, you, you get on, 
basically an elevator and then the doors open, it, the elevator's falling and rising and the doors are opening at different levels and you're seeing um, different video screens. But the way that they themed it, you know the, in Guardians and in some of the other Marvel movies like Benicio Del Toro played the collector. Hmm. And so they turned the whole thing into the collector's museum. So when you're going through the line, it, there's like all these specimens, plant specimens, uh, weaponry, all of the stuff from the Marvel Cinematic Universe that he's collected. To kind of make the, the line not that he's as playing. bad. Yeah. And that that was cool. And then you get in there, and it's he's got he's captured the guardians, and then they're each on display. So this and you've got like, to get them out by getting on an elevator. This is the main and opening. There. Well, you're the the premise is you're just there attending the opening of his new exhibit, which is seeing the guardians. So like it's really cool when everything in the line and everything leading up to it does that. But then when you get in there, yeah, like rocket escapes. Is it the real actors doing the, uh, all of it? Yeah, as far as I can tell, it sounds like it. I think they've upgraded Oh, well, yeah, that. definitely. I mean, definitely, there's footage There's footage of all of them that's like for the ride. At this point, so that's definitely. gotta be in the contract. Uh, yeah, I'm thinking Because so. you know, back in the day. They didn't do you, it. You'd show up at the ride. I ain't doing was, no ride. It's like, that's not, that's not Christopher Reeve. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> or whatever it was, you know? It's definitely, what's his name from Parks and Rec? Yep, Chris Pratt. Yeah, him. You couldn't remember Chris Pratt's name. <laughs> you know, he's definitely uh, he's definitely in it, and Zoe Saldana. I'll remember her name any day of the week. Yeah, right. And if you give me her phone number, I'll remember that too. I doubt that. No, I wouldn't. Uh, I don't remember phone numbers anymore. You just store them in your phone. Yeah. That was all a joke anyway. Uh, anyway. If, the, you had, if you had to. The theme. If you had to meet her, would you rather her be painted? just who she is or green? Oh, green, that would be awesome. Okay. And then I know she really worked for it to meet me. It's like, oh, you put in hours, <laughs> just because I said I wanted to meet the. I was on the jet bridge the with, green with version. her and her her man one time. I remember that you told me about it. Mm -hmm. um, that ride was thrilling. Again, it's the same ride physically, but I've never experienced the theme being placed on a ride and it making it so much more satisfying. Yeah, and you know, there's a lot of purists who get upset about that kind of thing. Who are like, Tower of Terror's been completely compromised because they've made it the Avengers ride. I don't see how anyone could complain because oh, it's so trust much me, more people amazing. People can complain. And it's so, I mean, that if was. If it can be complained about, it will be. My second favorite ride. And then towards the end of the day, we timed to go in the Cars line, which was over an hour. That's but, a good ride. But when the sun's setting on that. It's a good that, time. The set design of that world is just, it holds up so many years later and it doesn't even matter if you've. It's like it's a real desert. If you've seen the movie. It's so beautiful. Yeah. And then you get on the ride and you're like, you're in the car and like you're joyriding through this and you're just looking around like, like I'm I'm in Monument Valley. It never gets old. I, I, I love that. It's I love so that ride. great. So that's my my third favorite ride. But on the second day we went to Disneyland. Hold on, so you didn't go, to, you didn't go on Soarin'? We did go on Soarin'. <laughs> I love Soarin', man. Soarin' takes you around the world I now. love it, man. It's oh, not just ooh, California, Soarin'. it takes Soren. you beyond California. It takes you around the world. And you smell things. And you smell stuff. What yeah. kind of stuff do you smell uh, now? Oh man, I gotta go back. Grass. You smell grass? Because when they went over the orange fields Yeah, you don't Soren, smell any orange. Oh, the citrus, citrus You're spray? You're wearing a mask now. You gotta wear a mask inside with all this pandemic stuff. Have you heard about it? Mm, yeah. So you're wearing it's a going, mask. Something's going around. And uh, you wear insane. what? You wear a mask the whole time you're in Disney, no, or just when you go inside? Just something? inside. Just inside. Is a roller coaster considered inside? Mm, uh, like Space Mountains inside a mountain? No, I think you're moving too fast for the virus at that point. They can't yeah. keep up with a roller coaster. Well, Space Mountain, I didn't ride that, so I don't know if they made you wear the mask because that is indoors. You probably did have to wear the mask, but I won't know. The second day. I was like, as long as I can ride the Rise of the Resistance, which I have never ridden, I have been to uh, Galaxy's Edge, like the Star Wars world. I thought you a had ri you rode that the first time you went. No, just the Millennium Falcon ride. Oh, but Rise of the Resistance. But it wasn't done when Lily you had been on it. But no, it was, they weren't even talking about it the last time I went. And of course, this this ride is built up so much to the point where I'm like, okay. I know that it says that it's a two hour wait for this ride, but this is the best 
ride, theme ride on the planet potentially from, from everything I've heard. So I'm not, I'm not gonna wig out about it, I'm just gonna get in line. And first of all, talk about the lines and the walking. Like You're not ready for this. I was, I was not ready. You need a pair of wheelies. For being on my feet. All, it's by the, by halfway through the afternoon of the first day, I had to sit down and I was eating a taco and then I was like, y'all just, hey, y'all just go and do some stuff. I'm gonna sit here and I went to sleep. Well, Christy sent a picture of you uh, to our group chat and you were just sleeping. You were I was like, sitting up though. You, you were, no, there was one where you were lying down. Yeah, I ended up lying down. <laughs> it was like, well first I took my, my, I took my shoes and my socks off and she was like, this is a restaurant. Yeah. And I was like, this isn't a restaurant. This is just some tables but what outside. If everyone did what you did. What if everyone took their shoes and socks off at Disney? <laughs> I saw a few other people doing it. <laughs> so it's not like something I invented. Okay. Let me tell you, I was in a corner. On my right was nothing but plants. There was there, there was talk about escorting you out, <laughs> just so you know, between like <laughs> well, Herb a... from Omaha, Nebraska <laughs> and Dale from <laughs> You know, St. Louis, Missouri, because it says it on their name tag. They were like, "We, we got we to. We have a barefoot. We have a barefoot situation." <laughs> well, I mean, people we walk around to, in sandals. We we'll give them another seven minutes. There are plenty of people kick off their sandals. I just kicked yeah, off my shoes and my socks. Yes, yeah, and I needed to kicking man. off socks is <laughs> never good, man, for everybody else. <laughs> I'm sure it was good for you. I felt bad, but I was desperate. And then I was like, I this just have day to, one. I just had day one. I was hurting, man. And I was just late. I was just sitting there. And then it was a chair. And then once once they got up and left, then I moved over two more chairs. And then I just laid down, and literally went to sleep for at least twenty minutes. And boy, I needed every second of that. This makes me think about. There's a couple of potential modifications that they could make to the line. Now, obviously, they're doing a lot to make the line more entertaining because they're like, you know, making it like his museum or whatever. So there's interest factor along the way, but yeah. that only goes so far. Two ideas. Number one is provide a way for people to just lie down and slowly be pushed. Just I take, love that take your shoes and socks off and just slowly be pushed. Some people are in those motorized carts, but why can't everyone? But be? just something, yeah, I mean, something for everyone that doesn't take up too much room. Second potential option, and I know there's people who take this into their own hands and they come up with like a game to play while they're in line. I kind of feel like. Yeah, the heads, a lot of people are playing the heads up game. But like maybe Disney could actually create. Line games. Line games. That's, that, and, that's a good idea. And they bring them to you. I know an Imagineer who works in the parks. I, I mean, I could make a phone call and I could suggest this and then maybe get 10%. I saw the people doing heads up and then I just felt like now that if I did that it wouldn't be an original idea. As a family, we never even talked about doing it. But if it. you're like you're in the Star Wars ride line, this is the game that you can play in the line. And it's just yeah, like that's, that's, it, you know, it's the line is suited to it somehow. I had I did notice the one thing that they did even when the line was like 90 minutes and that's really what Rise of the Resistance was once we got in it. Now I will say, it ended up only being an hour. So it, it moved faster. The thing now, I noticed that was, was they, that was manipulation. Yeah, they, they, they raise the bar yeah. and then they make you happy. Yeah, low expectations, man. Keep um, life. The line never stopped moving. It wasn't stop and start, stop and start. And there were even some benches placed along the way, but because the line never stopped, you couldn't sit on a bench. Mm -hmm. So I found that interesting, but it did help a lot psychologically. But what it didn't help with was like, by day two, when it was my nap time again, here I am in this line, and I can't even sit down for a second. Uh. So, and I'm, I'm just, my hip flexor is just hurting. You're talking, first of all, you started off this episode talking about your physical, <laughs> your physical form. <laughs> Or your physical peak or whatever. whatever yeah, that was a setup. This is the payoff. Oh, uh, okay, got it. Um, and so I just, the only thing that would give me relief was deep squats. Like if I really squatted down, it would my hips would, would open up a little bit and I'd start to feel better. But the line wouldn't stop, so I had to, and I didn't wanna just keep squatting down and squatting up. 
So when I squatted down in the lineman move, then I just started duck walking behind the, you know, in the line. And I experienced lots of relief and ridicule from my family. I didn't realize it that Christy was posting this on her Instagram story. Oh, she did? Af like, I didn't realize it until the next day that like my duck walk and my napping session were posted on Here, here's, her Instagram. Here's the thing, Link. You are free to make all these choices, but others are free to ridicule you for them. I mean, that's that's what America's all about, man. Desperate, man. I was, I was, I would have, I would have stripped down naked and done like the the anus drag, dog drag. If 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 that was anyone was. else suffering in this way, I wasn't. I'm not saying that my anus was itching. I'm saying if it was to the point that I was hurting in other ways, that's what I would have done. Did, did you get? Uh, well, okay, yeah. Recognized? Was, it, was anybody else? Um, well, I'll answer that in a second, but the question I thought you were gonna ask was anybody else doing anything worth ridicule? Yes, I'm not alone. There was a guy in front of me in the line and he had a full-size Ziploc bag huh. with a rotisserie chicken in okay, it. Okay, that's worse. And he would open the Ziploc bag and he didn't buy the rotisserie chicken at the park. And that's not being sold. Well, first of all, that's illegal. You he, can't bring in chicken. Christy ended up talking to him and he said that his grandma made a chicken and then since they were coming to the park, he said, well, I'm not I'm not gonna give up grandma's chicken and so he brought it in this Ziploc Has bag. Has he heard of refrigeration? And then, <laughs> and then he opens the Ziploc bag and then he just starts eat, he He's doesn't eating touch. eating wet chicken out he of doesn't, a... Yes, he doesn't touch the chicken with his hands, he just eats out of the gap in the Ziploc bag, eating around the bones and then He'll, he would open it up and offer it to his older sister. She's like 17 years old. Oh, how old was he? Uh, like 15. Okay. So he, the, he was offering his gapped Ziploc bag with rotisserie chicken, chicken bag to his sister who was doing the same thing. It was like feeding yeah. a horse. Yeah. It's like feeding a freaking it, it horse. It runs in the family. You should be happy that Chicken Bag was close to you because it was a great cover. Cause, yeah. Cause it's like squat, squat walking man. Chicken Bag and Duck Walker. Squat walking man. We'd be a superhero is, duo right uh, there. Is, uh, Put us in the collector's yeah, can get museum. away with anything if Chicken Bag's around. Uh, Rise of Resistance was a 20 minute experience, which is pretty crazy. And it start, it, I mean, it's this entire story that I kinda don't wanna tell all of it because I don't wanna spoil it for people. Is it not a story that exists somewhere in an existing piece of IP? No, it's um, it's a particular time when like General Hux, you know the guy from Ex Machina who's not Oscar Isaac, the red haired guy. Yeah. Um, and then Kylo Ren are, are like, uh, they're the main characters and you're, you're on this resistance transport that gets hijacked, that well, that gets intercepted by them and taken into their ship. You know that was tough for Adam Driver to do. Well, you never saw Adam Driver's oh, face. Yeah, was you not, just saw the mask, and I don't, I don't know if it was his. It voice. wasn't, it, it, dude. Adam Driver. He first of all, he had to swallow a lot of pride just to get <laughs> right. to be a part of the Star Wars right. franchise. But when they said the ride thing, he was like, as long as I don't have to do the rides. Oscar Isaac was was oh, in it. Oscar will do anything for a paycheck. Oscar, he's great, man. <laughs> no, no, I'm just uh, kidding. Daisy Ridley was in it. Uh, uh, shoot, the guy who played uh, anybody who shows their face. Yeah, and um, so we're on the. It, so it's this whole story of like you're in, you get in a transport, but then it gets it gets uh, tractor beamed, or that's Star Trek, but it gets tractor beamed into uh, the Kylo Ren ship, and then you're inside of the ship, and you get off, you get off of the thing you were in, like the simulator, and then you're walking in this. The expanse of this thing is this huge. You're in this huge, like there's a whole freaking hangar full of ships and stormtroopers, and they're like, all right, move this way to be interrogated, and then you're interacting with actual so people. So it's like you're entering into the world itself. It's, yeah. Which it's is the whole point of the- Completely immersive, and so you get strapped into something, you're in a VR environment, you, you get well, you know, the guy unstrapped, that, you're walking around. I could walk anywhere. I could have I could have ran through a bunch of star troopers, star troopers, stormtroopers, and just like gone nuts well, so on this place. The the guy that I was not restrained. You you I know I could have duck walked all over it. You know the guy that I'm talking about. You don't he, he's he's friends with 
our family knows him, but you've met him. But he would he told me all about not, he didn't tell me like details, but basically when he talked about Star Wars like four years ago, yeah, he would he would be like, it's gonna be crazy. It's gonna be like you're walking into the movie, and and, and I was oh, like, gosh. I, I, I I was like. Yeah, that's what you they, get that's what they in, think, but they're gonna like oh, keep you like restricted and stuff. But you're no, saying you're not, that you can they that you got off of a ride, you were walking around a hangar, being ushered into another place. But what if you did? What if you went crazy? What if you did start running? They shoot you? <laughs> 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 yeah, I think. I mean, there's lots of weaponry. Lots. Of, you get zapped, <laughs> and, and they probably you get just make tased. it. They were probably ready to make it part of the thing. They wouldn't take their because like you, no one with a name tag would show up. They would just stormtroopers would take care of. Well, it. you were a prisoner being interrogated. At one point, we were put into a cell, and then you know Kylo Ren comes in, and he's and he's like, he's about to let us have it, but then he gets called into other business, and hold then on, we get on. rescued but, from that. But when Kylo Ren is it a dude in a costume? Uh, it was a screen at that point, and then at other points, it was animatronic versions of him and Hux. So that it was very mixed media. Everything that Disney has ever done in the theme ride, at different points, you experienced. All of it mm. and more. Um, super impressive. Like I, I can't remember the last time that like I've just walked around with my mouth gaped open for like and for eight minutes yeah, straight. You shouldn't do do that during a pandemic. Just I, I have a mask on. No one could tell it. Like underneath my mask, I was just gaped open the whole time, like that Ziploc bag with the rotisserie chicken in. Yeah. What was chicken bag with you? Chicken bag uh, got interrogated in another. Did room. they take his chicken bag? Th <laughs> they should have taken him out for that. I think he was zapped. <laughs> but I think they would have. I mean, if you if you'd have crossed some lines, they probably would have kept it part of the. You know, I think I think things. there's a threshold at which point there there's like a there's a level one there's like a level one we can keep the narrative going there's a level two okay level three is when the narrative breaks down and like actual Kurt from Missouri comes in and <laughs> right. takes takes you out <laughs> right you know uh, I I I was so amazed I didn't want to I didn't want to push the boundaries of anything or you could I wanted physically. to experience it as it was meant you, to be you, you couldn't move fast enough. But was I recognized? Any problems. Um, you know, I had this mindset that like, you know what? This is, I'm gonna let Lily be in charge. She's been in, she's been at all these Disneylands. I'm not gonna be in charge of, okay, we need to get up at this time, we need to get here, we need to go here, we need to get in line this way, we need to minimize how long we're in line, and we need to eat at this time. And you know, I really tried to totally relinquish control Empower her and and be done with it and and I think the report on that is pretty good, you know. Pretty I did good. Pretty I have some good. notes, but uh, pretty good. Um, she's a lot like me, so she had a lot of opinions. So it, it, I think that made it where we didn't fight. Nobody really fought because everybody was like, "Okay, this is this is Lily's." And you got world. to see everything that you wanted to see. You were two days. It's really what you need, I guess, at this point with all that stuff and all the waiting. Yeah, uh, we still saw everything we wanted to see. But I didn't get recognized as much as Lily got approached. Like on day one, she she like cosplayed as um, uh, Loki, and going into the like the Avengers, all the Avengers stuff. So like she had been Loki for Halloween, and then she did a version of that. So like all these people, some other people who were like lo fans of Loki or dressed up like Loki as well. Like she made friends with a couple of girls that were all dressed up like Loki. Hmm. So people were coming up to her. Hey, where did you get your, where did you get your your Loki ears and what or whatever? And then the next day we went to Star Wars. So she was your proverbial chicken bag. She was, yeah. <laughs> when it comes she, to when it comes to getting recognized, right? You gotta and have something. She was Ahsoka the next day. She like made her own Ahsoka Tano. Uh, what is that? Uh, it's this female character from the Star Wars universe, and she's gonna have. She was in most recently in the uh, the Mandalorian. She showed up. Towards the end. Oh yeah, okay. And she's gonna have her own show. And uh, if I showed her to her, you 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 know uh, you'd recognize her. Yeah. Um, Ro Ros Rosario Dawson yeah. plays her uh, now. She made her own ears, and she and um, people were coming up to her the second day, and and more than came up to me. But when people came up to me, of course, they all called me Rhett. Yeah, which keep, happens. Keep it that way. Uh, I've been called but, Link many times. But what, really though? Yeah. Okay, makes me feel better. I've been called Link by people who I had been with for hours. <laughs> I think that if you're just meeting, 
you're probably gonna say the word ret versus the word link to associate both of us when you don't really know who's who. But that's what, that's at least what I tell myself. But the thing that never happens that did happen was I was seated somewhere and somebody came up to me and the first thing I saw was somebody put a phone in my face and it was a picture of us. And then I looked up and the, and the guy said, this wouldn't happen to be you, would it? Oh, that's an interesting tactic. I was like, uh, yeah, I'm the one on the right. This, and I'm like making a face like, this is super strange. Well, and people, he's like, people don't, they don't always have a plan. Yeah, that, well, that, I mean, it's, that's kind of the thing you have to plan out a little bit. I'm gonna Google and I'm gonna, I guess he had confirmation, but then he wanted me to confirm it, which I did. It was just strange. I have a quick, I have a, a quick uh, holiday uh, recognition story now that you've told that one that I just remembered. I had to do a little uh, shipping, and so I had to do you know some like some boxing some, and some some like tracking shipping, um, okay. shipping that needed to be tracked, and um, so I go to the local I guess it's a UPS store, and of course I mean around the holidays I mean bonanza it's like there's seven people in line when I get there and I'm like oh gosh and everybody's got a different request and the guys working there are you know teens. Uh, and nothing against I mean, I'm standing teams. in lines for, for an hour and a half. Dude, you complained about seven people in front of you. <laughs> well, you know, did, you, I, I mean, I just did you had, duck walk? I hadn't planned. No, I didn't, I experienced no physical discomfort. Okay, there you go, see? Uh, but when I get up to the uh, register, the guy is like. Silence? There's, a, there's silence and there's, there's big eyes. Okay. And I'm like, oh no. Because there's now there's seven people behind me. Everybody mm. is in a holiday mood, which is not a good thing usually when you're mailing things. Mm -mm. And then he's like, "Red." I'm like, "Yep." <laughs> <laughs> it's like now's not the time. <laughs> and I'm like, "Dude, I don't want to do this right now." <laughs> and um, he he's a, he's a big fan, uh, and I appreciate that. And he ends up it, so we have our this all okay. Listen, I'm not. Trying to sound like a douchebag, uh, which it just happens. Which, which, <laughs> which may, but sometimes I have experienced this multiple times that when somebody who is doing a service for you, whether they're giving you food like a waiter, or they're checking you out of a store, or they're shipping something off for you, if they're very excited, if they're a fan and they're very excited, that's ninety nine percent of their brain is focused on that. And now the 1% is focused on the job that they're doing for you, which in this case, actually, this was very important that these two checks that I was sending oh, yeah. got to the right places at the right time. Okay. <laughs> and uh, I'm like, dude, don't, because I mean, you could tell it was I can't falling tell you, apart. I can't tell you how many times my order has gotten screwed up. My So many things have gotten screwed up, because it was, <laughs> and, and I appreciate the people being fans. I'm a huge fan of fans, okay? I love fans, and I love that people are fans. You're doing great. but. When they're doing something for me and they <laughs> screw it up because they're a fan, it's just, it's a little, it's frustrating, right? And so, but most of the time it's just like, oh, you gave me meatloaf and I ordered, you know, fish. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm, I can eat that, it's fine. <laughs> but uh, this was like, if you screw this up, it's gonna, it's gonna mess my life up a little bit right now, okay? <laughs> In a way that I don't want it to be messed up. So, <laughs> He he's doing his thing and and he, then he's talking to me. He's kind of giving me his 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 resume. You know, you got any open positions? Oh, okay. Going into the, that, giving me the resume, uh, and I'm kind of explaining the pro. Like, I don't really. That's not. I don't do. You know, I don't accept applications. That's not how it works anymore. But here's what you, if you're interested. There's postings, and I'm I'm like trying to be helpful, right? And um, yeah. and then he's like, okay, well, can I get a picture? I'm like, sure, man. Of course, I'm being nice. I'm not being an asshole. I'm think I'm not I'm thinking about all the people behind me who are impatiently waiting. Patiently waiting. Maybe they were impatient. Mm -hmm. And then he's like, Can I get a picture? I'm like, sure, man. And he's like, he pulls out his phone and he just again from over the counter, he's gonna just take a picture of me. <laughs> and I'm like, dude, you gotta be in the picture. He's like, Well, first let me get one of just you. I was like, I just get in the picture, man. <laughs> he's like, uh, at this point, you do not have the job that didn't exist that you're trying to apply. And for. then he's like, uh, "No, just let me get one real quick." And I'm just like, "Okay." Oh, and, he's arguing. Yeah. With and, you. And, and then he's like, and then I'm like, "Okay." And I just kind of stand there and look at the camera. And, he, and of course, I got my mask on. This is not going to be a great picture. Um, 
and he's like, he then he's like, you gonna you gonna do something? Oh no, you gonna like give the peace sign or something? He said, give the peace. I sign. don't know what he said, but I was like, I didn't respond. At that point, I was embarrassed because I'm like, who, these people they, they don't know who I am, and, this, and they're all in the picture, by the way. Yeah, well, they're all in the background. <laughs> they're, I, I love to see that picture. <laughs> And then I'm like, but come on out here and let's get a picture. So he came around and the other employee leaves the other register which had somebody at it to take our picture. And then there was something happening with the register and he had to go to the other register. And then, and then, and then the, the, at that point, the other employee, the other teen employee is picking up on the fact that errors may be about to be made. And you can tell he's sensing it. And he was like, did you make sure that you put that check in that envelope and that check in that envelope because we had to move to this register? And that's the only thing I'm thinking is like, yeah, exactly. Make sure the check is in that envelope and that envelope. I think it got there. I think oh, it figured man. it out. But uh, that wasn't one of my favorite interactions. Again, yeah. I, 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 appreci I appreciate the enthusiasm. Uh, I get nervous in, in the lines because, I mean, it's nice to, I like it when I see people who recognize me. Like there's that, there's like a shudder. It's like, hey, it feels, I mean, it's kinda, you know, it's kinda cool, you get to, a lot of people don't get to experience that moment of like, seeing somebody see you and they kinda have this like physical response. Yeah. And then the line keeps moving so they can't do anything about it, so they're like, it's like they're just kinda standing there shell-shocked. Cause it's, it's the only way when somebody meets you that you have permission to just walk away without saying anything. So I kind of enjoy that when being in the line, but then you see them, 500 times after that. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. You do, so they do have the opportunity to get their stuff together so they can like say hello. Yeah, and so, again, I, I, I don't think there, I don't think it's possible to talk about this without seeming like a douchebag because it's not a very relatable experience to be, get, to get recognized. So I, I, I acknowledge that. It's just, and I, and I do appreciate, I do appreciate it and I don't mind people approaching but it's just like there are certain circumstances in which it's especially inconvenient, especially yeah. for other people who are right. trying to get something done. And in those in those circumstances, um, again, I well, I was nice. I didn't, and and then I didn't. I almost apologized to the line of people as I left, but I was just like, I'm just gonna leave. Yeah, just get out of there. I'll just leave. Just get out of there. Disneyland. That that. That was great. Um, it was great for Lily to be home and for us to do something as a family because she had a number of people to see, um, you know, to reconnect with her friends and stuff like that with the handful of days that she was back home. Um, so it gave us our dedicated time because then once we got back, we did the Thanksgiving lunch, but then after that, she was kinda gone um, seeing other people, which we totally e expected and understood. And then whew, she's back off at college, just but like only that. just for a couple of weeks before the the Christmas break. So it was a it was a great experience being reconnected especially cuz like we all got along because we were in the, the happiest place on earth and I wasn't in charge. <laughs> <laughs> big big factor. I think I think that really worked. So um yeah, uh it was a success. Last thing I'll share is that um usually the day after Thanksgiving we go and get a Christmas tree. Uh-huh. We didn't because the family was hanging on by thread, you know, and dropping like flies, and I'm just trying not to get sick. So uh, Jesse was in no mood to go get a tree, and we had decorated a little bit before everybody got there. With like, there's multiple tree, there's multiple trees, you know. There's like, there's a tree. We I don't. There's already there's like four Christmas trees in our house, but not. And they're small, like kids have little ones, and I'm not talking big ones. So you're not gonna do a real one this year? Well, but so Jesse's like, we gotta go get the real tree. And I'm like doing the math on this and thinking, so we're gonna put this tree up, and you know, then we're going back home to North Carolina like mid-December. Yeah. And then we're not gonna be back until after the new year. And it's like, who? we're not gonna have anybody else over. And it's I, I just start realizing how much of a Scrooge I am when it comes to the decorations. Cause I'm like, the decorations just feel like they're, they're, they're for us by us, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And so it's like the by us part is the part that I have trouble with. 
Cause I'm like, oh, we're gonna have to get this thing. If it's just to, for you. We have to do the lights and, and, and she, and but she's like, but for the kids, it's like last Christmas here. I'm like, well, there's lots of Christmas decorations. There's multiple trees. He's got one in his room. We haven't yet gotten the tree. I almost talked her into. But there are other trees in other places, but just not, you don't have a main tree. We don't tree. have the main real tree that we put you in the living like room. You sound like my dad, man. They've got so, I mean, Halloween, they decorated for Christmas. They got like eight trees. It's like they live for it. I'm trying, we, Jesse, got, we well, got one tree. Jesse loves it. I appreciate the, listen again, I experienced the benefit because I didn't help with that. Other, I, all I did was went into the attic and like pushed, my bat was already messed up. So I was pushing the boxes to the entrance and then Locke was taking them down. Uh, and then Jesse's taking the stuff out. But I don't know, I think we may have passed the point of no return for having a tree. And then, I, and then I'm like, but if we do get one, let's get a fake pre-lit tree. And listen, I know the arguments against it. And That's I know what we have now. It, That's it, what we got last year. And so here's my question. I love it. You take it out and you. And How you, hard is it to put together? Easy, three sections and it's there and then it falls down and then that's it. And then you're like, this is disappointing. And every, and like, then you start hearing the complaints. It's not a real, it's too short, it's not this, it's not that. And then it's like, but well, just decorate it. And once you decorate it, it's, it's fine. fine. Just fine, you know? Because all that happens is, is the tree basically, cause we, I do all the stuff to take care of it, then it basically dies before we leave. Yeah. It, start, it stops taking water and then we get back and it's dead and then we take all, the, and just taking the stuff off of the tree it causes all the little needles to go everywhere. And then you gotta take it out and put it down next to the, you, you nearly kill whoever you're trying to do this with, trying to get it to the curb. I mean, so it'll are get picked there, up. are there, yeah, I, I'm with you, man. I, but I know I'm like, are there pre-decorated trees? You got pre-lit. It's like, can you go all the way, pre-decorated? You know, just pull Je out of the box. Jesse's not gonna go for you that. You know, it's just like, it's, it's all done. But, just but I, I will, I will say, is. the only thing that I usually help with is the lights, which is the worst part, and the top of the tree. Yeah, and so I can see why. I, if the lights are pre-lit, I don't have to worry about that. All I'm, I'll put the three sections together. Are your other trees not pre-lit? You don't know, because you didn't do those. I don't, they're all fake. Okay. They better be pre-lit. You don't wanna. Yeah. I don't think they're pre-lit. We're not in the 90s anymore, okay? Wake up. So anyway, I kind of, I love Christmas. I love the holidays. I like the decorations. Yeah. But I'm just, I'm a little bit of a Scrooge when I'm like, who, who, who why are we doing this? We're not, we're, if, we, if we were gonna be here through Christmas and the whole time and we had a bunch of people coming over. Right. That's not happening. So, am I a Scrooge? Hashtag Air Biscuits. Yeah, I'm gonna give a wreck. Um, I've been really looking forward to the uh, Peter Jackson directed Beatles docu-series which takes, it's called Get Back and um, I always think that it's on Apple but it's on Disney Plus. Yeah. Cause I looked forever, I looked all over Apple and I couldn't find it. <laughs> You're looking in the wrong it's place. on Disney Plus. I will say I've only watched like an hour and a half of it which is not much more than half of the first of the three six, episodes. Six hours total or something? <laughs> yeah, it's like, he really Peter Jacksoned it. So it's um, the footage leading up to their, their last performance, but they didn't know that at the time, of course. It was just their first performance in more than two years that they were gonna develop new material for to, to perform for us for a TV special, what well, it'll be a, and then they had a documentary crew, which that's what this footage is from, is like film documentary, and then the release of the album, which um, became the Let It Be album, if I'm correct, I believe I am. So uh, we heard some good stuff about it. We actually went to a restaurant, and they said, "How's your? Th how was your Thanksgiving?" And the waiter said, um, "It was great. I watched the the Beatles docu series, and I loved it." That's apparently all they did. And I was like, oh, it's out. I, and I, I was mean, so excited. I, everyone was talking about it on Twitter about how amazing it was. It's it's a test of, of patience and of fandom. So I'm giving this recommendation couched and it's not for, it's not for everybody because it's just a, but it, 
if you're really into it, it's, it's an amazing experience, but don't watch it when you're sleepy because it's a fly on the wall, um, just footage of them trying to pull together physically, like be in the same space again and start to write songs. They're bringing material together and they're starting to play and there's these, I, I get goosebumps talking about the just the, the flashes of creativity where you see Paul McCartney showing up and George and Ringo in there, John's not even there yet, and then he starts, he's just, he starts writing, get back. No, 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 no. You know, he's like, it's the genesis of that yeah. song was fully documented in that environment under all of this pressure. And you see all of their personalities and, and their that, interactions. So, and, they, and I get but the impression that they, there's not footage like this of them that exists. Because because everybody's talking about like, like I saw Mark Marin tweet, they're, they're, they're the guys I always thought they would be. But like, yes. and he's a huge fan. Yeah. I, it's like, there's just no one has seen But them I've never hung this, out with him this, like this. In this light. Uh, yeah, and people are talking about, and now I, I've only watched half of the first one and then there's some things that really start to happen. You know, like uh, I know that George leaves, he quits the band in the midst of this. Mm -hmm. So it gets really good, but it's like you really have to be committed to it. Um, and you have to be attentive to the points where the magic of those moments is really set up by kind of like the fly on the wall, 20 minutes of them just interacting. So it, it's, it's, at first I like had tears in my eyes and then I got bored. <laughs> so it's, it's, uh, it's a little bit of both, but if you push through, there's these, there's these moments that are just captured, I mean, based on what I've already seen, that are probably extraordinary. And it does go, it does go somewhere. It's just, I, maybe I'm in the most boring part of it, but I'm still recommending it. Get back. All right, speaking of that, we will get back with you uh, next week. Um, we're gonna talk about our purchases of, from 2021 that we did, we, we think same thing we did last year, going through, I'm going through all my Amazon I think Link is expanding outside of that, but we're going through everything that we purchased. It's still gonna be or less the, stuff than you bought. The highlights of the things that we bought in 2021. All right, talk at you next week. To watch more Ear Biscuits, click on the playlist on the right. To watch the previous episode of Ear Biscuits, click on the playlist to the left. And don't forget to click on the circular icon to subscribe. If you prefer to listen to this podcast, it's available on all your favorite podcast platforms. Thanks for being your mythical best. 